What is up, Moto Dudes and Dudettes? Welcome back to the channel. Alright, so the name of the game today is I'm going to try and just get lost <laughs> while I talk about random stuff. Because that seems like fun. I'm just going to keep going places I don't know and uh, try and get as lost as possible and then see if I can navigate my way back out. It's pretty hard to get lost here in Arizona if you've never been here. At least in the valley area, most of the streets are pretty straight. They might curve a little bit, but they don't like loop around usually. So you never have to worry about the same two streets intersecting more than once. I have yet to actually find that. It might exist somewhere around here, I don't know. But for the most part, as far as I can tell, everything's set up like a grid pattern. So, I mean, it's, it's going to be really hard to get lost, you know. So there's a lot of controversy been going on in the uh, video game world recently. A lot of people unhappy with a lot of the uh, decisions that some of these game developers have made as far as to the direction they want their company and their franchises to go. So it's going to be one of those things where I'm just going to kind of sit back and let it all blow over. What's up, bro? And, uh... I'm gonna wait for all the uh, hysteria to die down because between the games coming out, you know, that are kind of a little bit lackluster and then the backlash, the public backlash that's causing a lot of the changes to be made to the game, I find it's, uh, it's getting to the point where I'm just not enjoying gaming anymore, you know, it's, it's become such a controversial uh, facet of the entertainment industry. And so, uh, yeah, I don't know, man. Going out, riding, it's a lot more drama-free, as long as I don't run into knuckleheads driving around. So, Battlefield fans are pissed off at EA for having women participating in World War II, which, a little newsflash, that actually happened. So, I don't understand why people are so up in arms about that, but, I mean, it's not like they can't, right? And also, Activision's catching flack for structuring their multiplayer in their game to basically stack the deck against you unless you pay for, you know, the microtransactions, unless you pay for in-game loot crates to uh, enhance your gaming experience and better your chances against opponents. Neutral target identified. Hey, how's it going, boss? <laughs> nice, he nodded. He's like, I am not taking my hands off these handlebars, sir. <laughs> Anyways, where was I? Oh, yeah. Blizzard. Blizzard is also under fire for taking uh, uh, basically the concept of a lot of those Chinese pay-to-win games. The games that are free to play, but if you actually want to, you know, be successful, you have to continuously purchase in-game content. And that can easily add up to more than an actual game cost. Also, Bethesda's in trouble because Fallout 76. I tell you, you know, I heard a lot of people complaining about Fallout 76 before it even came out. One of the things I was kind of confused is why. I mean, for the first time, we were given the prospect of a multiplayer experience for Fallout. And then I realized that you don't really get to pick and choose who you play with, or at least that's the way it seemed. And then uh, a lot of people, once the game actually came out and they started reviewing it, I saw why everybody was so disappointed with Fallout 76. So, the first couple of Fallout games were basically like a roll to strike, kind of like a Dungeons & Dragons style game. A lot of the damage you did came down to a percentage probability. And so, with the, in with the evolution to Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas and even Fallout 4, you know, it was more about player skill. So wherever you aim, that's where you hit. That's where you're hitting. And that was completely different from the original playstyle of the first couple of Fallouts. And in these newer Fallout games, um, they sort of adhered to that in the VAT system, which is a, it's um, basically where you you can target specific parts of your enemy, and uh, like you can target a leg, you can target the torso, the head, whatever. And it's a percentage probability of your uh, 
ability to actually hit that part and it, it varies with range and with what weapon you're using but i actually really liked it i enjoyed it the ones i like the most i know everybody seems to love fallout new vegas fallout new vegas fallout new vegas to me it was just basically like an expansion for fallout 3 because it looked like the exact same game just a different location i know a lot of people are probably going to be pissed with that assessment but you know that's just my perception that's just how it seemed to me and although I liked it, um, I didn't I didn't enjoy Fallout New Vegas as much as Fallout 3, even though there was a lot more content, and I think that a lot of the content was better, better done than Fallout 3. Uh, I just preferred Fallout 3 more. And then Fallout 4, I definitely liked Fallout 4 the most. Um, again, I know a lot of the uh, Fallout fan base is, is not going to agree with that at all, but that's just me. I mean, I find I seldom agree with critics. When critics say anything about a video game, I find a lot of it is, uh, I think people just hear something and it already gives them this uh, perception of what to expect from the game. And then when they see it, it's there. You know what I mean? It's like when you're a kid and you've never tried something before and your parents make it for dinner and then one of your parents goes, ew, it's so gross. Well, right away, even if you normally would have liked it because your parents said it was gross, now you're not going to like it. And I think that's what a lot of a lot of critics end up doing is speculating about what a game's going to be like. And then people hear it and then they sort of adapt to that mentality. And it ruins the game experience for them and for everybody they spread that uh, uh, popular opinion to. So, you know, for the most part, I just play the games I want to see, and I determine what I think of it based on that. <laughs> Look at these guys. These guys are chill. Oh my goodness, I remember those days, man. Roll down your window, stick your arm out, let everybody know you're in chill mode. <laughs> nice. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, there's been lots of dramas. Lots of dramas going on in the video game world. Like I said, it's getting to the point where uh, it's not as, as fun of an escape for me anymore. Me personally, you know. Uh, unless I stick with the single player experience and just stay off the interwebs. Otherwise, you know, I like to come out and get some fresh air. I'm uh, currently working on putting together a tutorial video for changing the oil and the oil filters and screens in this bike. Because there's three of them. Only one needs to be changed regularly. The other two, I believe, you can just clean off and uh, and reuse as long as they're cleaned properly. So I'm going to be working on a tutorial video for that, and also I wanted to show you guys how to reset the service notification on the little gauge cluster because I had to actually look it up and figure out how to do it. It, it wasn't that uh, intuitive, so. I gotta pull in and switch out my camera battery because I know it's about to die. This uh, cheapy Chinese faux pro camera I used to record with is uh, it's like a $40 special on Amazon. The batteries only last like 20 to 25 minutes if I'm lucky, so I'll go ahead and stop here and swap out the batteries real quick and we'll get back on the road here in a second. What is this? Dean Hills Park? Oh, I've never been here before. Check it out. A desert park. Fun stuff. Oh, the things we find when we just go off grid a little bit. All right, so we're setting back off. So. Just let me adjust this. Sorry, guys. I know I'm moving the camera around a little bit. I keep... Uh, Raising the shield to get a little fresh air on my helmet, keep my sunglasses from fogging up on me, and then I gotta put the visor back down once I get up to speed. Because I have the worst luck when it comes to running into bugs, so I learned the hard way not to have my visor open even if I have eye protection on. Uh, I had a, a moth. <laughs> I had a moth, thank god it was just a moth, fly right into my helmet. And uh, it was it was slightly yellow, It was it was colored. A little strangely, I think it was uh, one of those uh, defense mechanisms. Go ahead, bro. Yeah, no worries. Anyways, I think it was one of those uh, defense mechanisms where, you know, something that's harmless imitates something that uh, is deadly or venomous. 
and uh, it scared the crap out of me so I immediately pulled over and checked and it was just a moth but uh, my biggest fear is that you know I'll be cruising along and have a, a wasp or a yellow jacket or <laughs> something nasty just fly right in my face or you know that's why I don't wear shorts ever is uh, one to protect my legs and also two to make sure nothing you know flies right up my short legs all right let's have a little fun here let's see make sure the coast is clear all right here we go <laughs> Woo! yeah Oh man, I can't believe the amount of vegetation they have in through here. Like, don't get me wrong, I understand. It makes the area look really nice, and also it cools down the ambient temperatures by reducing how much sun actually hits the, uh, the asphalt and the concrete and the rocks and all that stuff. But, I mean, all these plants just look like death to somebody with asthma and allergies like me. I mean, look at this. Everywhere you go. So many trees and bushes, all that palm, and this is exactly why I have to wear a balaclava every time I go out riding to filter out the air I breathe. Otherwise, I'd probably end up passing out from lack of oxygen because I can't breathe, wheezing like crazy. <laughs> oh, and that was another little gem I wanted to talk about. The other day I was looking up uh, YouTube videos for uh, Ford Focuses the RS and the ST. The ST has the same engine as my car. It's the Tomoko's 2-liter turbocharged 4-cylinder. And it's, you know, it puts out a decent amount of power. Um, and then the uh, the RS has the uh, same 4 Well, I mean, it's they're all the same 4-cylinder engine. Just the one in the Mustang EcoBoost has a uh, 2.3 liters of displacement, so the pistons travel further up and down. And then they put that same engine, I believe, in the Ford Focus RS but they can tune up the Ford Focus RS's engine to have a little bit more horsepower because it's all-wheel drive and it's front-wheel drive primarily. So even when you lay down on the gas, um, you know, it doesn't send you sideways like it would in the Ford Mustang. And I think that's what they were trying to do is prevent it from being a little too powerful. I don't know. It doesn't make sense to me because, to be honest with you, the, the V8 version has even more horsepower than that. So why they would tune it down for the for the Mustang, the only thing I could think of is that so it doesn't compete. Neutral target identified. Structure contains munitions. For whatever, you know, the next then why would you go with the V8 except for, you know, for the better sound, of course. And, uh... That's when I realized, unlike here where they use the 2.3 liter four cylinder, uh, in in other regions they actually use a Volvo mo modular five cylinder turbo engine. Yeah, I saw a couple of exhaust clips or heard a couple of exhaust clips, and it sounds just like a V10 Lamborghini. It sounds just like the the Gallardo or the Huracan. Like it sounds so much better than a four cylinder just by having one more cylinder. And it doesn't sound like a V6. It doesn't sound like a V8. It sounds literally exactly like a V10. All right, guys, that's my time. Thanks for tuning into the channel. I hope you enjoyed this ride along. As I said before, I'll try and have that uh, oil change tutorial video out for you as quick as possible. Thank you for the views, for the likes. I really appreciate you guys stopping by and taking a minute out of your day to watch my videos. Hey, I know what that place is. That's a rock sorting facility. And that thing right there, I think, is a rock sifter. I've seen enough of those now here in Arizona. The one thing we have in abundance is rocks. <laughs> Anyways, please feel free to comment, like, and subscribe. I really appreciate the feedback and the views. Thank you so much, everybody. Until next time, have fun and ride safe. Peace.